Welcome to Investors Hangout. This fortnightly interaction to help you learn more about saving and investing is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sunlight Mutual Fund and Value Research. Now with me today is Dhirendra Kumar, the CEO of Value Research, and K.S. Rao, the Head of Investor Education and Distribution Development at Aditya Birla Sunlight AMC. Now today we're going to be talking about resetting your priorities in the new normal. So at the moment, investors are facing a lot of uncertainty and not just in the market, but also more general financial uncertainty. And we've been getting a lot of questions about the kind of changes you need to be making to your portfolios and to your investment plans. Now, Mr. Rao, I'd like to start with you. So as things, you know, slowly get back to normal and we all, all get back to work, the virus still looms large, so that hasn't gone away. So how should we proceed? How should investors proceed? Yeah, thank you, Rachel, and uh, good morning to everyone. I'm glad to be back to Hangouts, and it's always a pleasure to be at Hangouts with the Rain and each one of you. And uh, thanks once again. Uh, yeah, it's uh, as we uh, like uh, locked them. Unlocking uh, is uh, for fourth phase has just started. Uh, of course, uh, it's like you know people are looking at life is going to be normal. Unfortunately, COVID-19 pandemic has created havoc, uh, which is uh, uh, you know it's the worst financial crisis over in the last hundred years. Uh, and uh, if someone is uh, someone is we are going out doesn't mean that we are expecting that life is going to be very normal. I think we are in for a disappointment, and things will take some more time to settle down. And life was never normal after the air travel was never normal after 9/11 episode, and it took some time to set back and get back. Uh, of course, uh, optimism is right, but optimism is no substitute for honest uh, evaluation. And uh, it's like one of my friends who is a financial planner. He says, "Hope is not a financial plan." And uh, this is a time one need to look at your own financial habits. Having seen during the lockdown, you know how much you are saving and how much your your business cities which you are working in it, which can give you to look how you can look. Get the new normal very differently, and to put here, to answer your question, probably one need to look uh, to increase their cash reserves. That is uh, either you call contingency fund or you call it as an emergency fund. In the normal course, also we used to tell six to nine months is your emergency fund. But the post-COVID in the current scenario, because the uncertainty is little larger, one need to look at 12 to 24 months of contingency, depending on your lifeline requirement. And this contingency fund is equal to not your income, but it is your total spend, a total net worth. It's a, it's a, so you need to look at how much you are spending, your monthly spend, which includes your insurance premium. And which includes your debt servicing, and all these put together, it should give a lifeline, and it should be depending on the age and stage of your life which you are looking at. And the second most important thing, as we open it up, one should not ignore is to have sufficient health coverage, which includes COVID coverage to available to them. Great advice, Drain. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I agree with him that you know you need to do the attention, you need to review your plan. Uh, what you thought will be your emergency coverage may not be enough to revisit that. But more importantly, you know, I think there is something before that which one should take care of, which is making sure that you don't lose your job. Uh, if there is a scaled up continuity of your income stream from a job, if that is important to you, uh, and then of course all these things are important, but they come later. Uh, be prepared for a scale down. Make yourself more useful. You know that is that because if you don't have income, saving then an investment don't happen. You know. And then, of course, it's time to revisit, review, and uh, the scaling, you know, scaling up or scaling down your uh, emergency fund. Uh, <clears throat> but more importantly, uh, making sure that you don't get distracted, because you know, right now the noise is so much around what is going to happen. Is the great uncertainty. There has never been a big, bigger uncertainty than this for everybody, all of us, on all fronts. Financials is is uh, not, not different. Dreen, if you could also talk about what are some investment do's and don'ts that we should be following at this time, other than what your both spoke about, having your health insurance, your life insurance, ramping up your emergency fund, and making sure your income flow is in place. What else can investors do? So a lot of people are getting worried uh, about uh, should they be taking their investment or should they be investing? Have they missed out? Somebody did it earlier. I think it's sticking to your own plan based on once you have reviewed your situation. It's critical because uh, finally we have to still, you know, act in beliefs. Put this into plan, and but one has to be hopeful of the future. Uh, mm -hmm. In the sense that uh, things will limp back to reasonably dif differently. It will not be back to the old ways, but you know, in a nice way, a few years from now, uh, 
without that premise you know you will not be able to take care of that uh today the, the the question which comes in every question answer session at value research is that uh, should one buy gold uh, or you know should one should one sell equity funds because you know the, the markets are not in sync with the outlook for the economy uh, uh, so you know and this is the time when people are going to be you know uh, unusually uh, you know anxious and they may just you know uh, be tempted to act in a haste so having that asset allocation plan so having a financial plan having that asset allocation plan sticking to it sticking to your investment uh, plan as usual and uh, not acting in haste uh, so, so these are important and not getting carried by what is happening because it is having a you know disproportionate impact on our mind when you see that your neighbor is behaving differently or you are very concerned about something uh, we stop thinking rationally so i think uh, keeping a cool head ignoring the noise and not chasing the hottest investment idea right now uh, because that could that may not be a good idea and that just might be greed driving you mr rao is there anything that you'd like to add to this uh, in addition to whatever i uh, mean what what he said i personally feel one need to look at succession planning at this point of time because um, having seen the covid the impact you know wherever thing people have suffered i think uh, it, it's a pain is much larger and why we need to succession planning the importance of succession planning is always there but covid has given little more important i think you know one it's a, it's something like one how we need to write uh, write a will and uh, it's like you know relook at your will if you already written and that will give a clarity of purpose where your money has to go and uh, like you know this the, this pandemic has uh, really created uh, panic among many and it's also have work among many families and uh, it's like it has also made us uh, realize life is always uncertain and now this uncertainty time if something happens to someone whether you have given your your will right you have you written your will have you given to the have you managed the, uh, like you know all the nominations for your each of your investment that's the most important and uh, its will is not equal to the wish and uh, it's like you know will is having a legal document uh, one need to do that i think it, it it's a, i personally feel uh, it's a must since we have just unlocking and it somebody has to look at their money very differently and um, i mean in addition to whatever dirian said will i personally feel has to go forward in fact i used to use a term called you go to out with a mask now and you need to have a little bit of a financial mask that financial mask your financial planning ke liye mask that is you know uh, m is for manage your wealth uh, uh, with the asset allocation a stands for asset allocation and uh, s stands for your staggered investments and k stands for keeping your eye on uh, uh, your emergency fund and health insurance have that mask and then you can stay healthy and stay wealthy thanks mr rao that sounds like really good advice and for those watching do get your wills and your succession planning in place we don't like to think about things like that but you know it's always good to so we now move on to the questions that our viewers have sent us now um the first one comes from jedi when he asks Why are the markets and the state of the economy not behaving in tandem? When are we likely to see some correlation? Now, Mr. Rao, I'd like you to answer this one since you come into contact with a lot of investors and would have some idea about why this is happening. Yeah, it's like you know, uh, we have there is there are two ways to look at it. Uh, uh, we are just getting the markets to the pre-COVID level. and uh, and during the covid time we have seen 35 to 36% percent, uh, uh, 35 to 40 percent fall and we just come back and we just bounce back and people are looking at you know economy is not doing well why markets are doing well but honestly this is a covid time it's not a war time uh, there was a little damage outside things are becoming normal and markets will always anticipate the future and we are looking at economy which we are into the present and when you look at uh, discounting at the future probably markets looks at uh, reasonable and uh, i'm not saying on the valuations are comment on the markets but you know market does its job and ma- probably market predicts things in um, much ahead of time and maybe maybe dhiren can answer about uh, dhiren can add something to it yeah there are a lot of answers there, there are a lot of rational to you know why market is going up simply because investors are not pulling out all kind of global investors are putting more money into that the central banks have released all kind of liquidity in the market to ensure that uh, uh, you know this crisis impact can be marginalized or reduced uh, besides that you know even the the, the whole uh, correction also turned out to be an opportunity for many investors 
both are thought that a good part of the market was not reasonably priced and it became reasonable. So that is why a lot of investors also started investing more. And investors have been waiting for uh, you know a, a, a set of companies which were never available cheap. So they got an opportunity to buy it cheap as well. Also, there's a greater real, realization that, okay, this is a crisis, it happened, and most companies will be impacted. And let's look at it in terms of, uh, or, you know, I've spoken to many fund managers who say that, okay, one year is gone. Uh, so uh, we have to see that, you know, uh, there, there will be an impact. There will be an impact for a set of companies. And uh, I don't think, that, even in this whole resurgence or the whole recovery that we have seen from the big, big decline, is uh, there are many companies which have never, which have not made a comeback, and there are companies which have gone past the pre-COVID level. So there is a there is a differentiation, there is a discrimination in the kind of companies uh, which are making a recovery. But I would say that uh, we have absolutely no control on all this. We could not have anticipated COVID-19. We could not have, in, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's there too many moving parts. What different central banks and different investors do. What you have far greater control on what we were talking earlier. Have a plan, the money which you don't need, the, the likelihood of losing your money, uh, you know, losing your job, the likelihood of income reduction because of this situation. And that is going to, you know, that is far more predictable. Predicting the, predicting the external things, so focus on yourselves. Thanks, Dreen. So, Jadeep, the markets and the economy may not be in sync at the moment, but as Rain said, the fact also is that a lot of companies haven't recovered to their pre-COVID levels. So the best that we can really hope to do is to invest in good funds and good companies and stick to our plan. So the next question here comes from Sandeep Srivastav, and he asks, what should be the asset allocation mix in the current situation as we are battling with COVID? Also, I have invested in a regular plan of a mutual fund scheme and now find the expense ratio too high. Kindly suggest if and how I should move to a direct plan. Dereen, if you could answer this one. Yeah, I would like to answer the first part of the question uh, a little comprehensively that most investors, you know, should choose one of the four asset allocation. One is that if you're getting started, uh, don't do allocation because, you know, you do, you have nothing to do. Uh, you are getting started. Uh, so, you know, 100% into equity, if you are going to invest one and a half lakh rupees and that to in a tax relief fund, don't do anything, have 100% into equity. You need to do asset allocation only when you have built something meaningful. And I would say that we should have broad kind of you know framework in our mind that a third of your money should be in fixed income once you are still in your earning phase and accumulation phase. So that if the market, you know, the March kind of situation happens again, you have some shock absorber built into your portfolio. Once you are getting closer to your retirement or post-retirement, then maybe you're equal, uh, you know, 50% of it in equity, 50% on fixed income is good enough. Because then you will get rebalancing opportunity uh, meaningfully and more often and sometimes once, once or twice in a year. And if you are a very conservative investor, started late, not experienced, you know, it, it is very unnerving the whole equity experience. Maybe a third of your money should be in equity, two third in fixed income. And you should keep, you know, rebalancing periodically uh, or as and when your asset allocation goes out of whack. So this should be your guidance rather than the state of the market because the market will misbehave and, you know, many a times uh, and if you reset your allocation, that itself will do the job. Now, should you move from your regular plan to the direct plan? Ideally, you should if you don't need any advisor's help. But if you have if you have got hold of a good advisor who does your hand holding, he actually he, he, he turns out to be a good counsel in bad times or anxious times, then carry on with the higher expense. Yeah, I agree with you, Dhiran. You know, but I personally feel if you have a right advisor, it always helps for you because it is not exactly markets. Right thing. What you do right thing makes you rich, and you know most of the times the advisor comes back and says. Uh, I mean, you know, my advisor helps me to manage my emotions most of the times, so rather than the markets. And you need an advisor, as you rightly said, asset allocation is a key. And advisor can always help with what is the right asset allocation. Now, since various asset classes, now the most of the asset classes have gone up, and you know what is that next? How you need to rebalance? I think advisor will play a vital role, and the advisor alpha could be much higher. But it all depends on the individual. If you are capable of doing on your own, and uh, yeah, of course, uh, directly can always have a choice. Uh, I mean. Jasmeet Singh writes in to say, I have already lost a lot of money in equity. 
Do you think equity funds will still give good returns in the next 10 years? I'm very hopeful and I'm very confident that, you know, equities will give great returns in the next 10 years. Uh, but I think, you know, you don't let this uh, loss, uh, don't miss the opportunity of learning from the loss. Try and figure out what happened. Did you invest lump sum at one go? Did you become greedy at in a very narrow point of time? Because I feel that, you know, yes, there would have been losses to many investors, but you can marginalize your losses by, you know, having some plan of investment which is stagger your investment in equity, making sure that you are diversified, making sure that you are not doing, uh, you know, trading in der derivative or you're not speculating in the equity market, which also has become very easy. So uh, if you have a plan, you can reduce your losses because, you know, the way to, uh, you know, the, there are two ways of benefiting from market. You know, one is that uh, don't act in a manner. Equity markets will do very well. I'm confident that it will do well uh, over the next 10 years. Uh, but I don't know what exactly will do exceedingly well, what will do very poorly. There will be, you know, uh, there will be ups and downs. And if you come only at the uptime, don't invest through the downtime. If you don't invest in good companies or a good portfolio or a good mutual fund, uh, it won't work. Uh, so having some plan and sticking to it and understanding a little bit is important. So I would say that, you know, have some plan make sure that you have taken the lesson from your losses and uh, formulate your plan and uh, don't follow that again because uh, to make money you have you also have to make sure that you don't lose a lot of money so the next question here is from gaurav padar and he asks when we move our investment from equity to debt or vice versa is it considered a switch or a withdrawal and what are the tax implications I think you know any any switch is also considered as a redemption. Uh, the taxation law applicable to the respective yeah. asset class. If I am moving from debt to equity, now it is depending on three years or like one year, whichever is the short term capital gain or long term capital gain, which applies to me, it's it's considered to be as a redemption. And vice versa, the equity is also same. It's considered to be a redemption, and it will be added to your income. You know, it's a, uh, like you no. Know, that's the reason one before you switch, you ensure how tax. Uh, I mean, how it is impacting you on the taxation side. That's the most important thing. Right. So, Gaurav, if you're watching, any STP or any switch that you do from one fund to another will be treated as a redemption in one fund and a fresh investment in the other. And you'll have, and depending on how long you were invested for and whether in uh, equity or debt, you will have to pay the applicable short-term or long-term capital gains tax. So the next question that we have here is from Anubrata and he writes in and says, I did not have an asset allocation plan so far, but now plan to implement a 75 to 25 equity to debt allocation. While reducing equity, should I sell the winners or the losers? I have been investing in equity mutual funds since 2013 and have been able to accumulate rupees 70 lakh with an annual return of 7%. Okay, I would say that, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Go with your, hold your long-term winners and use this opportunity to organize your portfolio. Uh, in many years of investing, you know, 5, 7, 10 years, we end up being a collector of funds. So choose, you know, few, hold your few good funds consolidate and in the process you know implement your asset allocation and uh, don't get uh, uh, you know disappointed with the seven percent return uh, which has been so far look at you know <clears throat> the accumulation plan and you know th th that's the best that's the only alternative we have uh, if you if this money is for many many years you are doing a great job hold your winners stick to the asset allocation plan and uh, make sure that you are investing for many years all right, now this next question is one that we've been getting quite often of late, especially with the increased interest in international funds. It's come from Minish Thakkar and he asks, is it advisable to invest in fund of funds? Dreen? Uh, it is generally, you know, <clears throat> unless, unless any fund of fund is offering you something special. For example, the only case in which fund of fund is uh, advisable is uh, uh, there are many overseas funds and they are, you know, it's an opportunity for you to participate and uh, only the fund and fund of fund structure is uh, is possible there. So there are some great investment which is available in that structure uh, and uh, they're, they're relevant. Otherwise, I think, you know, if you can, if you are clear about your financial plan, if you're choosing one or two multi-cap fund or you are, you are, uh, you have an advisor or, you know, you are able to do things comprehensively yourself, so you can you can do without having a fund of fund. Uh, that's perhaps you know uh, 
fund to fund have a small disadvantage that they they have a marginally higher cost than the usual fund now deepak patan shetty asks how should i balance my portfolio in the current situation when the market is overpriced also how do you see gold investments doing over the next 5 years uh as i was telling in the context of another answer that you know decide on your asset allocation and plan accordingly if your equity has gone up and if you were you stick to your portfolio you know your asset allocation there might be a rebalancing opportunity uh having an asset allocation in mind is that uh, you are able to you know you have some reference point and uh, it gives you a premise to plan because if you are guided by the market it is very difficult to anticipate what is the market, you know where is the market headed how long it can actually re remain unreasonable or uh, very expensive or very cheap when it will turn around and you know the big moves happen when you least expect it so uh, have your plan rather than you know base it on the plan of the you know or the state of the market outlook for gold i really don't know because gold becomes market favorite when there is uh, uh, then the, when there is fear of, in the economy then when there is fear in the financial market uh, when ego you know last time the big move, boom in gold came in 2008 and now we are witnessing a similar kind of boom it's up about 50% but gold has become a very volatile commodity and it is it, it undoubtedly the store of value but don't don't confuse it that it will not lose its value also in the entry there have been occasion when gold has not performed well and successively for few years right now gold has gone into a state where many investors are buying gold or you know gold investments simply because it's going up and uh, when lot of investors do that then things turn around and so right now gold has the momentum uh, how it will be doing in next 5 years i really don't know in 5 years time frame you can be sitting on losses in with gold too that is that is an opt that is that is a thought which you should not be surprised with uh, that is also a possibility great so deepak follow the range advice and have an asset allocation plan and rules for when to rebalance and stick to that and as for gold don't invest simply because of momentum we're now going to take our last question and this one is from balan baskar and he asks what is a true test of mutual fund performance over a 10 year horizon trailing returns or rolling returns Three. I would say that look at trailing return. Trailing return is more robust. But you know, when you are looking at ten year ten year performance, I would say that the simple test of a good mutual fund is is that in a ten year time period, typically there will be two two three up cycle or two three down cycle. If and my real test is a, of a fund is that uh, if the fund is doing little little better in a rising market. and falling little less in a in a fall in a falling market and rising little better than in a rising market that is a good fund and in in the 10 year track record of if the if a fund has a 10 year track record uh then you will get two three cycles and that i think is a reason and and also making sure that you know the same fund manager has been around for a reasonable period of time so that it will ensure that there is a continuity thanks dreen and thanks mr rao for your insights For those watching as Drain said, don't worry too much about the news but focus firstly on stabilizing your income before moving on to anything else. And as Mr. Rao said, ramp up your emergency savings also taking into account your insurance premiums. So do continue to send in your questions and keep watching. Bye for now.